It's Casino City's coverage of the 2008 World Series of Poker. Here's our interview with 8th place finisher Kelly Kim. What's going on guys? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did a pretty good job of hanging in there. Yeah, you know, I know that I have one shot at this in this lifetime probably, realistically, and uh, I just wanted to try to wait and wait and wait as long as I could. I know surviving, every hand you wait and survive, there's a better chance for you to squeak up. And obviously I wanted to win this thing, but you know, you got to double up first or accumulate chips before you could do that. Did you feel like it was a mistake getting down to like three big blinds? You know, it was close. I had some really close decisions, but like, um, but I didn't have anything strong, you know? Like I had the kings where I was pretty much all in the dark. The very first hand had two aces and the ace king was pretty grueling, but uh, those were like the three best hands and I didn't get full value from a lot of them. So, I mean, given all that, like, I mean, it's tough when you're so short, like you can't be really, I mean, even if you're first one in, everyone's gonna call and check it down. So you gotta find a hand that's a volume hand as well. And I didn't have any volume hands, so. I can't, I mean, it's amazing that I just squeaked up one spot, like what happened to Craig was unfortunate, but that's what happens when you, when, I mean, you gotta give yourself a chance to move up and then, then you go for the tournament unless you have a lot of chips. Did you change your strategy once Craig went out? No, I had no strategy. I, mean, I had six. <laughs> I had six hundred thousand. I had like a hundred with the ante. I had one hundred fifty left. There's absolutely no chance I'm folding that hand. Yeah. And uh, you know, I moved up one spot. I'm very ecstatic about it. So, I mean, I ended up having two fours, and I knew it was a huge dog against three players checking it down. So, if I flop a set, I flop a set. Are these players any different than what they were in July? It's hard to say because a lot of them I didn't play with as much. Um, I definitely sense that like the last hour or so, like every m majority of the middle to slow low stacks were just waiting me out and uh, the bigger stacks were going after it. And so you could see that there started to become a huge discrepancy in chip counts. But like, how could you not wait me out when you're playing for so much money? And each jump is like 400,000, et cetera. Have you done the math on the difference between ninth and eighth? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I have a good idea. I mean, I, I think it's about 350. It's like I think it's like 380. I'm not you're sure. Coming, <laughs> <laughs> but, you're the now, what was going through your head on that ace king hand? The ace king and yeah. ace king. I was yeah. like, well, it's poker, you know. If I lose, I mean, I have no problem losing that way. It's part of the way the games play. There's some luck to it, you know. I mean, I got really lucky to fade it out twice, but it actually in. In Europe, I got knocked out the same way at Ace King of Clubs against Ace King of Hearts of John Jawanda with like 70 players left, and he ca he caught heart of heart. So, you know, I mean, you play this game, you you take the abuse and you give the abuse, and overall, we just love to play it. So, what was it like having such a big uh, crowd supporting you? It was amazing. I mean, you never think that these people would come out and watch. I mean, you got friends and family all over the state and all over California coming in. I'm just really glad that when I did get in with Kings against Ivan, I doubled up so they could cheer because it was looking gruesome. And <laughs> and they really wanted to, you know, yell out and support. But, you know, I hung out as long as I could, you know. I mean... It didn't really affect the way my play because I have a set style. I mean, obviously it adds some more pressure, but this game's about pressure when you're playing at this stage, you know? I mean, you obviously don't want them to show up for nothing. And uh, I mean, not that they win in any ways, but you know, you just add some more pressure to yourself to do well. And, I mean, I wish I could have, you know, made an epic run or like a miracle run, like a fairy tale and chip up. And what do you like at the final table now? You know, it's tough to discount Demidoff and because of his late, late run, and I really like Peter Eastgate. I think he's very talented. He always puts you on your heels, and, you know, if Chino gets a hold of some chips, he's going to be scary, and I don't know. I don't know if Elon got a lot of big hands, but he just really turned it up a notch, and he, he put a big unknown factor in his, his game, so, What's I mean... The, what do you mean the unknown factor? Well, I didn't play with him at all, but generally speaking, my idea, my, my perception of his game is really tight. And like this, this tournament, he put in some really big raises and some, he moved in a few times. And so, you know, he put more pressure than I've ever seen from him. So I don't know if that's a, a ref reflect of the four months off or whether he just changed his style or, you know, he's given himself a best chance to win. Kelly, you've had four months to think about this day. And, you know, no, really, no, one, of us, no one here really knew what to expect walking in. Is this what you expected, this atmosphere? It's, you know, I'm not really, 
I didn't really expect anything from the atmosphere because I just knew a lot of people were going to come out. I knew that there's going to be crowds, people are cheering, but when you don't think about the people, you think about the task at hand, and, you know, we're playing for the World Championship, and so, like, I mean, this is what we as poker players do, is we dream and we envision being the world champ. And uh, even though I had 2% of the chips in play, like, I really, really wanted to win this, obviously, you know? Is it, is it going to be hard to pick yourself up after this? You know, I don't even feel down, you know? I mean, you have to be, you have to look at the situation. I came in with less than 2% of the chips in play, so... I have a lot to be proud of, and the fact that I squeaked up even in one spot is it's, it's great. And so, obviously, if I finished ninth, like if that hand, that hand before it happened, like it would have been a pretty devastating to just come in and wait four months and then show up and walk away with nothing extra, but anticipation and heartache. But I think I played. I really think I played the best of my abilities today. And like, if I got a little bit luckier early, or if a better situation arise where I could get a pure double up to five million, like. I never had more than like three, like the first hand at one put me at like 3.3 .3 and I never had more than 3.3 .3 the whole day and, I, and yet I still played for four hours or however long. If you had to uh, give any advice to the folks of the World Series about what to do next time around if they have a uh, delay, what would it be? Um, well, there's a lot of things, you know. I mean, I love the fact that they're taking a shot and giving, um, giving a shot to get corporate sponsorships. I mean, we as poker players put up our own money. It's like not like any sport where... You know, we put up the money and we don't get any, we need help outside of the poker. So we need, and they're taking a chance and um, I mean, promoting the game and getting corporate sponsorships involved. And like, there's a little, there's a little problems with like the timing of it all. Cause he's been wanted like to air it as real time as possible. But yet a lot of us don't get any air time till like the last three weeks. And it's really hard to like hammer out like deals where we can get promotions or sponsorships when like they don't know who you are, they don't know what's going on, and like it's hard to adjust into the uh, budgets, right? So like overall, I think like this stuff's gonna be hammered out within the next few years, and like you know, like we gotta start somewhere, so why not start here? So I'm, a, I'm, a, I guess I'm glad to be a part of it from the beginning, and I mean I hope to come back, obviously. You had a couple deep runs in between. Are you gonna <laughs> stay on the circuit? Are you gonna take a little break for a little while? What's next? You know, I really don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I'm obviously, you know, I'm definitely going to play poker. I love this game. It's done so much for me. And um, But, like, right now, I'm just going to wind down. I'm going to spend some time with friends and family and take it from there. All right. Hey, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks.